morning, everyone. Um, here we are back learning again. I hope everybody is tremendously disappointed that we had the fast on Tisha B'Av and Mashiach did not come and just turn everything around, which any second it's going to happen. But and so, OK, it's never too late, never too late. And now is always now. It's always not. So Mashiach has to come right now. So the Rebbe said, this was talking about this week's Shabbat. This week's Shabbat is uh, we read a special haftorah called Nachamu, Nachamu, a double, a double uh, comfort from Isaiah. Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, that God comforts the Jewish people doubled and redoubled. And the Rebbe said that this tells us not just that it's two times, but it's doubled and redoubled and redoubled and redoubled and redoubled. And the good that is hidden in the world in this physical world and in every human being, we are not aware of. And Mashiach will make it, make us aware of that. That's what it's going to be doubled and redoubled. And not just in the world, but in every physical thing in the world. For instance, the Holy Temple is just a building. And that's going to reveal a new type of good that we've never had before. Okay, so let's see. I think we can maybe skip a little bit of this. That's what it means. God of itself. And Shabbat Nachamu, there will be a comfort, a doubled comfort. Doubled comfort. What's this here? Yes, 100%. 100% right now. We just have to do more acts of good, think about ourselves a little bit less, and do a little bit more good so that we'll be on the way. She will just come and give us a push to increase doing good. <clears throat> This is the, okay, so here we are. What's going on? I got the wrong pointer over here. There we go. So this is a, a, a comfort, a doubled comfort. This is the first of the seven weeks of comfort, Shabbos's weeks of comfort, that God is comforting us for the fact that he destroyed the temple. How can he comfort us such a tragic loss? Is the answer is <clears> that he's promise, promising us that we're going to see that it was all worthwhile. <laughs> So for sure, there has to be the bavare o bavare. There has to be, certainly has to be, tzorichim liot, there must be, gula mitzvah a complete redemption. Like the days of you going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles, really. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a prophecy in Micha. The take of him, yad, it should happen immediately. Be itzum or Shabbos, read in the middle of this Shabbos while the Rebbe was speaking. Shalomach ratu ba'av. The day after Tuba of Shabbat Mudgash, Habligbul, the infinite infinity of good which will be revealed in the future redemption. What are we supposed to do? Benoke Ela Paul, Kevin Sinshin, him saying that since we are now on the edge of the Gula Mitit Fashlema, right? So don't look at what's going on in the world in a totally negative way. A lot of negative things are happening, yes, but we have to look at it, first of all, from God's point of view. Namely, that any second, the true redemption is going to come. God loves every human being. Every human being in the world is made in God's image. And this is supposed to be revealed any instant. <clears throat> We're going to learn that more. We'll get to the Sikh of the Rebbe. So all the terrible things that we see in the world, it's just like the pus coming out of the boil. It's terrible stuff. And let's see, the doctors are trying to treat it and everything. But okay, you want to look at the news, at the this, this, but don't get too excited about it. For sure, don't get pessimistic. <clears throat> don't get pessimistic. Because if we look at things, the, first of all, the, the whole thing that's happening in the world is only in order to make us look at something good. Right? Every day, everything changes, everything this, the one stable, 100% sure good thing there is in the world is the creator of the world and the godly soul of the Jews. And from that, it'll spread out to the Jewish people in general. And then it'll spread out to the whole entire world. We'll see that the world is good and that humans are good. We'll see that always was that way. It was just covered over by all these other confusions and religions and crazy philosophies and things like that. 
Okay, since we are now found at the edge of the future redemption and the redemption, and Shabu that in it you will be in open bleakable everything good that will be infinite. So Richa, it is necessarily you to be a we have to have a little bit of a taste. <clears throat> in other words, people will have children, but their love for their children will be infinite. And people will have jobs, but their produce and their honesty and their enjoyment in their jobs, how they benefit people, that'll be infinite. How, who knows how it's going to be, but it's going to be. The Arab Shabbat, so therefore we have a little bit of a taste of this. It says that before Shabbat, you're supposed to taste from every dish on Shabbat. How are you supposed to do it? You do it? I personally do not do this, but there are some people that do. I haven't got much of an appetite before Shabbat. But there it says that it's supposed to be a thing you're supposed to taste from all of the foods Arab Shabbat, right on Friday, right before Shabbat. So Shabbat is <clears throat> the age of Mashiach, the perfect age. But there's no troubles. There's only just serving the creator of the universe. And we're, we're getting a little taste of it now. We're right before Shabbat. May heavily me obligable from the <laughs> from the unlimitedness, from the infiniteness, infinite good. Of Geula by means of how can we taste it? How add on Torah and commandments, but open in a way that's above understanding, above logic. Learn more Torah than you want to. But what's the big problem? Exile, egotism. Because of egotism, it makes us uh, a shell that we just feel ourselves. We think about ourselves. Okay, that's the way God created the world, but we have to go out of that. So okay, it's not going to be. A hundred percent, but never let that's the idea of going out of Egypt. But we can do ourselves. That's the Tanya talks about this over and over again. Do a little bit more than what you want to, as far as Torah and the commandments and being good. Give a little bit more charity, a little bit more time, a little bit deeper, <clears throat> a little bit more sincere. But is <clears> and even even more detailed. Hosefa believing the Torah, we should add on learning the Torah, adding the nights on the days. The, day, the nights are becoming longer now. And <clears throat> nigla the Torah, whether the revealed Torah, whether the hidden Torah, and there's the ideas of Hasidut, add on more. Kola limud en Yaakov, learn en Yaakov. What's en Yaakov? En Yaakov is a book, a gathering of all of the agada of the Torah. The Agada of the Torah, the Agada are like the stories of the Torah, interesting stories that in the Gomorrah, in the Talmud. The Talmud. Sharov Soda the Torah says the majority of the secrets of the Torah are hidden in the stories of the Talmud. For Odin also, and even more, Limud Penimus Torah to learn the inside of the Torah, learning ideas of Hasidut. Like the Arizal said that the day of the passing away of the Arizal was just a few days ago. Hey of. Shabbatorot Eilu, that in our generation, the last, it is permissible and it is a commandment to learn the ideas of Kabbalah. And of course, learning the ideas of Kabbalah as they inspire us to do Torah and commandments. And especially the Akhre after Shinit Ba'ara was explained in the Torah to Hasidut in a way that it's relevant to understand each of this whole novelty of Hasidut, especially Chabad, that it makes use of the ideas of Kabbalah to inspire us to do more in Torah and commandments, to be more God-fearing and God-loving and Torah-fearing and Torah-loving and Jewish, loving the Jewish people, every Jew, and loving God's creations. That inspires us. <laughs> so add on as much as we can, and then we'll be in the right direction. When Mashiach comes, so we'll be... It, what, what, what he say? We won't think that he's our enemy. He's making us do things that we don't want to do. I want to do something else. But Mashiach, no. Want to do good, and Mashiach will automatically help you. Even if you don't want to do good, Mashiach will help you. But it'll help you to go and turn around and go in a different direction. Had Gasham, you had it, and especially in learning the Torah in the, the, as far as Geula, especially you should learn parts of the Torah that talk about the future redemption, about Mashiach whether the revealed part of the Torah talks about Mashiach, and especially in the book of the Rambam, Maimonides, right in the end, there it has all of the laws that are re relevant to the time of the future redemption, including all the laws of the temple and the service of the temple. Shalom Din that we read now in these days. The Cain also the laws of kings and their wars 
and the laws of the Mashiach right in the end. Right? Mashiach is not just this idea, this, how do you say, uh, the, the, the mythological idea or religious idea. Mashiach is actually a human person that's going to be a true leader, and the world needs leaders. I mean, we see, right, the world needs desperately leaders. And you have bad leaders, the whole world is thrown into just total confusion. You have good leaders, and there's someone to, how do you say, to direct us to, to do good. And the ultimate leader will be the Melech HaMashiach. Melech HaMashiach is going to be a person that he's going to leave the good leaders the way they are, but he'll just <clears throat> and introduce the main, as a new aspect, but a main aspect is true values. Mashiach will bring to the world true, objective values. Life is good, marriage is good, family is good, honesty is good. The hen, the penim, worshiping God is good. Hen, the penim is a Torah. Whether we're talking about learning the ideas about Mashiach, whether than the inside of the Torah, the, the ideas of Hasidut Kabbalah, that in addition, <clears throat> or whether the, like the Rambam, we said the Rambam is the revealed Torah. Shednos of Lakach, in addition to this, the the general learning of the Torah, the inside of the Torah, this brings closer the redemption. Like God said to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai through Elijah the prophet, he said, with this book of yours, the Zohar, the Torah of the, of the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, <clears throat> God said, with this book of yours, these secrets you're revealing, Yifkon will go out, bay with it, mina galuta from the exile, barachamim with great mercy. Yesh ilui miyuchai belimur chalakim apinimi, but there's also a tremendous benefit in learning the inside of the Torah, the, the ideas about the sfirot and etc. That, that talk about the ge'ul of the future redemption. Umatov and how good it will be that this learning should be in a way of 10 people. 10 people should learn together and they should learn Torah. Kahara, like it says, the different the Bar Mishnah. Shalom Dim, the Pirki Avos, like it says in the we learn in Pirki Avot every week, right? At the end of Shabbat, we learn Pirk, the chapters of the fathers. This week we learn the third chapter. And Shagam Romans that this also hints at that through redemption, that by means of it is made. A double, <coughs> everything will be doubled and redoubled. Is it true this week we learned the third chapter? I don't think so. I think here in Israel we learned the fourth chapter. This, here it is, one second. Just give me a moment, give me a moment. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, here in Israel we learn the fourth chapter. I think you by outside of Israel are learning the third chapter of Perkyo, the chapters of that. Okay, yes, let's see if we can also add another thing regarding to the future redemption when we're learning the third chapter of Pirki Avot. It says over there, how does it start off? It says, look at three things, and you won't, remember we learned about this before, look at three things and you won't come to do a sin. And it said, what are the three things? Know where, for you, where you're coming from, where you're going to, and who is going to judge you. And then it says what the three things are, where you come from, you come from a little drop, where you're going to, etc. So the Rebbe says, you look at it, you know that there's three things. What does it have to say? Look at three things. Just say, look at where you come from. Why does it have to even have that little sentence? Look at three things. So the Rebbe said, this three things is talking about a separate thing in itself. We can say that this is also hinting at, at the third redemption and the third temple. Right? The first redemption was from Egypt. The second one was from Babylon. And now the third one, it says, is from Rome. That's one we're in now, 2,000 years. This is a triple redemption and a triple temple that includes in it the first redemption and the second redemption. What does it mean? Look at three things. You should look. It doesn't mean just look. It means you should, like, meditate. Look deeply. Shemur, this looks at Eon You should look and contemplate in a very deep way in three things. First of all, what are three things? The third redemption, the third temple, and with a hope, <clears throat> and especially a desire that I will wait for the Mashiach every day that he's going to come. He's going to come, not that you have to, it's a commandment to wait every day. We're supposed to expect the Mashiach is supposed to be here every day. We're supposed to be tremendously disappointed that he doesn't come, but being disappointed doesn't bring Mashiach. We have to wait. We have to be, anticipate. Oh, Mashiach should come right now immediately. 
It's one of the 13 principles of faith. Of the Rambam. Allah has come, come, much more so when we are right now, just seconds before everything just turns around. Look at these three things. This is more power than ever. We can say that this looking at the redemption and the three things, namely the third temple and the third redemption, this brings about a completion in all of the service of God. By the way, I mean, we can also just remember that when the Jewish people were in exile, two people were invading a minute, here we go, give us shalom, shalom. We have to remember, let's see what these two people get admitted here. We have to remember that now, now we're waiting for the third redemption, right? We got out of Egypt, and then after that, the first temple was destroyed, so we got out of um, uh, Babylon, and we came down. But both of those two, the Jewish people had basically given up. They were in Egypt, you know, it, it just wasn't happening. They were just worse and worse and worse and worse. There was no way they were going to get out of Egypt. They had no means. They had no hope, no leader. They knew somewhere down deep in their, you know, in their conscience that it was going to happen. But, you know, all of a sudden came along Moshe and he took them all out, right? Took everybody out. That's pretty amazing. Says the Rebbe, the same thing with the second. People went to Babylon. The first temple was destroyed. Everyone saw that they deserved it. And that's it. They gave up. It says that the people that were left back in Israel, they intermarried with the non-Jews that were there. And the people that were in Babylon also, they, they became weak. They forgot about the whole entire <clears throat> redemption. And all of a sudden come along, came along Ezra and Nehemiah and this, and they brought all the Jews back. Amazing thing they could never dream there was going to be. Well, here's the same thing. With 2,000 years, we've been in exile. A person could say, okay, listen, we've, in Egypt, we were 210 years. Okay. <clears throat> in in the, the exile from Babylon was 70 years. So, okay, you know, it was bad, but not, not like now. Now it's 2,000 years. That's like how many generations is that, right? The, the 40 generations, I don't know, 70 generations. Generations after generations after generations. But somehow whether we have not forgotten about the Geula, and the reason is, is because it's true. And it's waiting, and we can feel it somehow or other. But the Rebbe is trying to make us a little bit more crazy about it. In other words, when the spies came into the land of Israel that Moses sent, and they, re they came back and they refused to go into the land of Israel. And that was on Tisha B'Av. That's why we su suffered Tisha B'Av. That's why the temple was destroyed. The Rebbe explains what was the mistake of these spies, the Meraglim that they went in, is that when they came back, they thought about themselves first and God second. And Moses, when he sent them in, he wanted to think about them to think about God first, and then themselves second. And the Rebbe proves it about the orders of Moses and how they reversed the orders of Moses. In any case, that's the that's the same thing. God wants us to think about ourselves. He wants us to think about our benefits. He wants us to have a family, to have a house, a nice house, a nice car. I've had millions of dollars in the bank, whatever you want to, but it has to be thinking about God first. So you want to have a nice house, it has to be on God's terms. You want to have a nice car on God's terms. You want to have a million dollars in the bank on God's terms. It could be you don't need a nice house. It could be I don't need a nice house. Could be, right? A nice house everybody needs, but you don't have to have like four stories, or maybe you do. Maybe you do need, but you have to think about God first. That's the whole thing. And then think about the world. That's also the same thing he says about think about three things. You won't come to do a sin. What's the three things? A person might think, listen, I'm a religious Jew, myself and God. That's what I'm thinking about. Says the Rebbe, no. You have to think about yourself and God and the world. In other words, it's not just me giving myself and surrendering myself to the Lord and he's my creator. And that's, that's, also, that's very nice, but that's only two thirds of the picture. It has to be, <clears throat> but it's two-thirds of the picture. You have to think about the creator and devote yourself to the creator, but you have to think about the world. You have to benefit the world. That's why we're here. And by thinking of those three things, it'll be, bring the third redemption and the third temple. We can also say, looking at these three things, the, the third redemption and the third temple, this will bring about a completion in all the service of God in these three things, namely Torah, 
avoda means prayer, and gemilat chasadim and doing acts of kindness. That this is kiyomai by means of the three things. Uh, of these three things, what happened? Some other. Eh. Oh. The, the three garments of thought, speech, and action. Shavoda eno ba'ofen. It has to be in a way that you don't serve God in a way of like, <clears throat> you say, piecemeal, divided. An infinite way. Everything that's possible to do, you do as much as you can. Comes the time for learning Torah as much as you can. Comes the time of doing good deeds, you do as much as you can. There is in a completion in all of the three ways. Yesterday, I'll just tell you this little story. Yesterday, I went to visit a friend, a good friend of mine that is in the hospital over here in, uh, not far from Kor Chabad. And some little voice, it was hot, Ooh, it was hot yesterday. And it was, uh, in Israel, it was really hot. <clears throat> and um, it, also it's a fast day, right? A fast day, it was a long fast day. It was a very difficult fast, you don't drink. You know, like, but something inside of me told me, listen, bring a pair of tefillin and ask people there to put to fill. Usually put on to fill. Usually I go out on Fridays. I'm going to go out soon. We go to this big marketplace in Tel Aviv. But somebody told me, bring a pair to fill in. Something bigger told me, don't do it. It's hot. It, you're thirsty. Nobody's going to put on. There's not going to be any people in the streets. As soon as I started listening to this big, logical, more mature voice, the more logical and mature it was not to go. What am I going to take a pair of tefillin and stand in the middle of the street? All these things. But I already know. I know from experience. I've been doing this and having this argument in my head for 40, 50 years. I know what to do. I have to just agree with everything. Yes, you're right. It's hot. Nobody's going to be. 100%. No one's going to put on tefillin. It's just going to be foolish. And I'm going to get sick. I'm going to faint. Who knows what's going to happen? At least I'll be in a near a hospital. I agree with everything, and then I said, okay, and then I take the tefillin and I go. So anyway, so I went, and I stood in the street, uh, this, and I figured no one's going to, and people, I, in my mind, it was saying, listen, no one is going to come, and people came to me. I didn't even have to ask anybody. They, oh, oh, tefillin, can I put on tefillin? <laughs> so it shows that the way we're thinking is not the way the Rebbe is thinking. So therefore, the Rebbe says you have to do a little bit more <clears throat> in everything you do in good. Ask yourself, what am I doing? What I'm doing is good. If I'm doing good, so I should do more. It has to be in a pleasant way. It has to be in a peaceful way, in a loving way, but it has to be done. The Yesh Lo, see if we can add. Also, the same thing about learning Torah, right? Okay, I'm finished. I learned enough. Go over what you learned one more time. Yesh Lo, see if we can also add in this, the connection to what we said before, that you have to learn Torah from the 15th day of of And the three, the three things are talking about the Torah, it's talking about the Torah. It says there's a tr we were given the Torah is triple. Why triple? There's Torah and Nevi'im and Ketuvim. Ketu Ketuvim. This also is especially Torah Chadasha, especially the new Torah that the Mashiach is going to bring. Like we said before, we'll feel the godliness in every word of the Torah. Shehachanal is that the preparation is this by learning how do we prepare for this new Torah, the Torah that we're going to feel. The Torah is not just a book in the library. It's a book directly from God. How are we going to feel this? <clears throat> by learning Torah now in a way that's unlimited. From the 15th day of Av and onward, which the 15th day of Av is Wednesday onward. According to this, we can also explain what it says, look at three things that you should, and you won't come to do a sin. The three things we learn in the Shabbos, which is after the 15th day of Av. By us, it's not after. By us, it's a few days before. That even though on the 15th day of Av, everybody decides that they're going to add on learning Torah, but nevertheless, on Shabbat, we have to add a little bit more in a way that it's doubled and keeps doubling and redoubling. May it be God's will that if we look at these three things, at the future redemption, at the three things of Beis Amikdash Ashlishi, and the third temple and the third redemption, we will merit immediately to the third temple. Actually, Immediately, now, and simply on this Shabbat Parshat Etchanan, this coming Shabbat, Shabbat Nachamu, before we begin reading Shabbat, the section that's after that, Ekev Tishmon, on Mincha of Shabbat, 
the redemption will come. And this is relevant, especially to now. Like it's known that Akiv, Akiv is next week's Torah portion, but we read a little bit of it on Mincha of Shabbat. This refers to Akiv means the heels. Akiv also means since. The simple meaning in the Torah is since. Akiv, Lotishmu, because you didn't listen. Akiv, because you did listen. I'm sorry. Akiv, Akiv Tishmuun, because you listen. It says, Akiv means because. But the word Akiv also means, Akiv means the, the heel. This is talking about the end of days. Akivs of the Mashiach. Like this is the heels of the Mashiach. That then sim, sim, certainly we will listen. We will feel. We will observe and do the commandments, all the commandments and thought, speech, and action. <clears throat> then will be fulfilled what Moses, Moshe said, that Moses is the first redeemer and the last redeemer. Moshe said, God said, let me go and see this good land. It says he will come to this good mountain, and that's Jerusalem. This is the Beit HaMikdash. That Moshe Rabbeinu, that's how this week's Torah portion begins. That Moshe Rabbeinu and all of his generation and all of the Jewish people from all of the generations, all together with this generation, our children, our elders, our sons, our daughters. That's the that's what a sentence that says, who got out of Egypt? Who got out of Egypt? And Paro said, who wants to go out? And Moses said, all these people, our elders, our youth, our sons, our daughters. Nasi Doreinu Barosha, the previous Rebbe, will be in the head. Boim v'nichnasim will come to the holy land, to Jerusalem, the holy city, the holy mountain, and the holy house. And we will there rejoice, a tremendous re rejoicing of the future redemption because of the great joy, a tremendous joy, with the, 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 like it says about the Simchat Beit HaShe'iva, right? In the holiday of Sukkot, it says they used to dance. The, the, all the, it was a tremendous joy. And then it says, Mishalora Simchat Beit HaShe'iva, one who did not see the joy of the days of Sukkot in the Holy Temple, never saw happiness in his life. So they didn't even used to go to sleep. And the language of the rabbis in the end of Masechet Tainit, it says the Kodesh Baruch God is going to make a machol. He will make a circle, a dancing of the tzaddikim, and God will sit in the middle, and each one will point with his finger. It's like the, like this says they, they did when they went out of Egypt. They said, they will say, this is our God. We have waited for him. So everyone will see and feel godliness in the most revealed ways. And now we're going to do, try to finish the Sikha of the Rebbe that we started about the sound of God's voice not having any echo.